so then we're moving on to the next presentation. And for that, I'd like to invite Thor Morante from C-Web. And uh, he is going to talk about one of their new projects called Game On. Thor, if you want uh, and if you're ready, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for this introduction. And uh, well, uh, first of all, good afternoon for, for everyone who, who is joining us today. Thank you very much for, for your interest in participating today to the presentation of the Game On project. I will uh, share my screen now, uh, if you give me a second. And uh, hopefully it can be seen. Yep, all good. Perfect, good. Um, so yes, my name is Tor Morante. I am a project coordinator at C-Web for Biodiversity. Uh, I have been working uh, in the environmental field for poof, over 12 years now, uh, being uh, involved in communications, in project coordination, in international cooperation, and uh, even at the very beginning in, in journalism. Uh, currently, I am coordinating the project uh, Game On. Um, CWEP is the lead coordinator of this project. And, um, well, welcome to, to this presentation. First and foremost, I would like to make a brief introduction of CWEB for Biodiversity, um, the institution I worked in. Uh, CWEB is an NGO network of 53 organizations in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, we are headquartered in Budapest, Hungary, and we have been working over 25 years now, uh, mainly for one thing, which is the conservation of biodiversity and obviously to, to change the drivers behind seed loss. And we do so mainly focusing in, in two themes. One of them is uh, policy making and advocacy, uh, where we are carrying all the, the needs and positions of uh, Central and Eastern Europe and obviously of our 53 member organizations and uh, to Brussels. And the other one is the uh, project implementation where we pretty much uh, trial test uh, our policies through our projects in order to better develop them. And currently we are dealing with uh, projects on uh, safeguarding eco corridors in the Carpathians, climate change, as you're about to see via the Game On project, sustainable tourism, uh, the Natura 2000 network, uh, the common agricultural policy, the water framework directive, the list goes on and on because in the end, uh, dealing with biodiversity conservation has a, a plethora of branches that needs to be tackled. So that is CWEB for biodiversity. And uh, now on to the project, game on. Um, the project is funded by the DEAR program. The DEAR program is the Development, Education and Awareness Raising program. Uh, it itself addresses uh, climate change uh, via a gamification approach. And it is uh, conformed by a partnership of uh, 10 members dispersed in eight countries, namely Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, and Slovakia. These are the eight countries where we are implementing uh, all our activities and products, but obviously with the aim to reach beyond, not only to the whole sea area, but to the whole of Europe and uh, potentially have a, a global audience. What is the project about? Um, the project has a, a main aim, which is to activate the youth, the global youth, uh, to react to the existential threat climate change represents for the future of humankind. Obviously, climate change is a very broad uh, topic, a very broad problem, if I need to be specific. Therefore, we decided to focus on uh, three main core areas. Uh, to revolve our activities and products and contents about. Uh, the first one is the area of biodiversity conservation. The second one deals with adaptation and mitigation. And the third one uh, deals with climate justice. Um, how are we pretty much doing uh, or addressing our activities and products? 
um, we are uh, preliminarily recruiting youth ambassadors uh, from the eight participating countries who will help us uh, deliver and transform and replicate and have a much bigger impact on our contents and on our activities. Uh, our activities, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they are gamified. We are about to revise them in the next slide. Uh, but that was the, the catching angle of the project, considering that we are addressing mainly a, a, young, a young audience. And the idea is mainly to raise awareness on the problems of and the solutions to climate change. And ideally, and ultimately, uh, to push for a massive mobilization of these uh, European youth and Europeans in general to demand for and to make the changes that we need to make in the system uh, to tackle the climate change uh, problem. Okay, so how exactly are we raising this awareness? How exactly are we trying to activate the youth uh, through these uh, gamified products and activities? Um, first and foremost, we are currently finalizing the development of a mobile application that deals with uh, challenging the users to have a better sustainable livelihood uh, it's said with an award system, with a competition system, with an scoring system, as well as uh, indications to tell you how much of an impact you are having, a uh, positive impact, obviously, uh, through your everyday action. The mobile app should be ready in the next few months and uh, it will be free to download and accessible to everyone. We are also developing a board game on climate change um we are developing moreover uh, stand-up comedy performances and improvisation theater performances uh, that deal with climate change the very first will be done here in hungary it will be a stand-up comedy performance with three comedians that will be addressing uh within their their scripts the themes of uh, um, biodiversity conservation mass extinction uh the effects on, on the wilderness and on the wildlife. Obviously, we think that um, addressing these, these problems that are no joke uh, through uh, an entertaining pattern can actually prove uh, successful. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge to try to see new ways uh, communicatively uh, in order to pretty much uh, render the messages and activate the people. So that is why we are doing these uh, different kind of activities. We are moreover preparing the overlayering of museum exhibitions. Uh, for instance, in Hungary, we will do two. One of them is in the region of Tokai, very famous for its wine production. And uh, within the Museum of Tokai that deals with the history and production of wine in the region, uh, we will be overlaying with the topic of the effects of uh, climate change on agriculture and on wine production and uh, on how potentially we could lose that area uh, in some of the scenarios uh, to grow uh, grapes and end up producing wine. Some other things that we're doing um, is, for, ex for instance, the uh, International GeoQuest, pretty much a geocaching challenge, of which I will talk a little bit more in, in a few seconds, uh, as well as wilderness camps. Um, and besides those two that I will dive in deeper, um, we are also dealing with uh, the greening of festivals uh, throughout the region. One of our partners in Latvia is developing a, a handbook on how to green festivals. And us at CWEP, uh, we are developing uh, an e-learning platform that is meant for a non-specialized audience in order to render the, the knowledge that it's needed to comprehend, to understand the, um, the problems, the challenges, and the solutions to climate change. Uh, that should be ready by January or February, more or less. And we are also delivering educational materials uh, for high schools on uh, biodiversity conservation, uh, on adaptation and mitigation, and on climate justice, uh, all related to the topic of climate change. 
Um, so, well, of course, what brings us here today is uh, wilderness. Um, it is, it is International Wilderness Week in the end. Therefore, I wanted to focus a little bit in one of the core areas that we're having, that is the area of biodiversity conservation. Um, it is no secret that changes in our climate uh, threaten to disrupt and will end up disrupting the ecosystem balance. Uh, uh, throughout the planet. And uh, we are already speaking about uh, how a uh, new mass extinction on a planetary level uh, is expected to happen. Uh, obviously, uh, with these effects on the wild, uh, the, the whole system crashes and uh, it will uh, greatly affect ecosystem services and therefore the capacity to inhabit the planet, not only for, for all the life there uh, excluded of humans, but including humans ourselves. Um, for instance, uh, mild winters and early spring can cause many plants such as andelions to blossom sooner, making them be out of sync with uh, pollinators. And this kind of trend uh, would ultimately jeopardize food security, for example. Um, we know how the system works, we know how everything uh, is, is merged and synchronized and therefore uh, there is a huge need on the, not only protecting uh, uh, the wilderness, the wildlife, the ecosystem services and all what they produce, but to properly understand why we are protecting them. Um, because that usually is left uh, behind and the message tends to be we have to protect, we have to protect, uh, while not properly delivering the, the understanding to the general audience on why exactly is this happening. So what are we doing um, in the project regarding this sense? Uh, first of all, uh, among our several activities, I wanted to mention our wilderness camps, uh, because this is strictly relates to the topic of this International Wilderness Week. Uh, we are organizing a total amount of 52 wilderness camps uh, in seven out of the eight countries of the consortium, uh, all of them except for, for Germany. Um, uh, why exactly? Because we, we think that being out in the wild does provide uh, an incomparable opportunity uh, to reconnect with our roots, to learn about them. Uh, in the end, uh, no matter how urban, urban we are nowadays and how much the trends uh, tend to bring us from the rural areas and the wild areas to the cities, we come from the wilderness, uh, there is no escape there. So the idea is to reconnect uh, people, our young ambassadors, uh, influencers, uh, journalists, and young people, generally speaking, to the wild, uh, to revise what uh, the ecosystem services and their linkages to people and lifestyle decisions that are part of our natural relationship with the, with the environment. So obviously the wilderness camps will have a focus and are having a focus on the theme of climate change and its link to ecosystem decline. And they are pretty much set in a, in a pattern where experienced educators uh, uh, alongside children and youth uh, participate in, inter in interactive exercises, in workshops, in seminars, and also in volunteering actions uh, related to the project's theme. Uh, so far, we started this year with the wilderness camps, uh, but obviously due to the coronavirus uh, scenario that has made things difficult for everyone, uh, we also had uh, to postpone some of the wilderness camps in some of the countries according to the governmental decisions in each country. Uh, but we have been doing them in Romania and uh, in Latvia, while in Lithuania, for instance, we changed the approach and uh, organized uh, separate excursions and not necessarily camps. But obviously, as soon as the global situation normalizes, uh, we intend to, to move on with the organization of uh, the rest of these wilderness camps uh, all around. And um, 
obviously we are also dealing with the international GeoQuest uh, challenge. Um, why exactly? Uh, because it is an opportunity to, to link uh, different pieces of a complex problem by taking people outside and um, not only nature lovers, but adventurers, explorers, and anyone who, who wants to do something different and take them out to different places, out in the wild, out in nature, uh, but also within your, your own secret uh, havens, uh, natural havens in cities and in rural areas, um, to show them uh, this, this link uh, or these links of uh, the complex problem that climate change represents and its impacts uh, that are being had on both nature and people. Uh, and that's allowing for all participants to have an enhanced experience and obviously a learning experience. So the idea is to showcase the diverse effects of climate change and its links uh, with our environment. Uh, we will do so through read-all tests, uh, showing the effects on people, cities, and ecosystems. Um, it is mainly, I don't know if uh, some participants have done geocaching in the past, but it is mainly a, a treasure hunt. And we consider it very important due to the capacity that it has to reconnect people with the wild, um, giving them a, a challenge to, to really go out. I wanted to uh, pretty much address this issue because I, I had been reading a little bit of um, uh, Henry David Thoreau, this American essayist and poet. And he had this uh, super wonderful quote um, that says, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, deliberately, <laughs> to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. So mainly the idea, uh, not only through these activities, but uh, throughout all the activities of the project, within the uh, biodiversity conservation core area, is to try to make people, as I was mentioning, not only work on the protection and the conservation of wilderness, but to really understand uh, why it is important uh, in, in the array of ways that it's important uh, from an ecosystemic balance uh, pattern, from uh, the ecosystem services uh, pattern. Uh, even if we consider the International Geocaching Challenge, uh, the, the effects it might have in, in your mood, in your psyche, um, there is a transcendental, fundamental importance of uh, why we need to protect uh, wilderness. And for that, we need to understand the importance of biodiversity conservation. And um, I wanted to show you, uh, before I finalize, a very short video uh, that one of our partners has just recently done on this uh, bird watching trip in Lithuania. Um, I hope uh, that it can be seen. I will only show the first two minutes and then share on the chat box uh, the link to it. But let's see. Paskutinis gerbiukas šių metų. Pats paskutinis. Būna, jeigu jaunikliai, tai jie jau su kam pilkom smėlinėm galvom ir pa, patys paukščiai pakankamai smėliniai. Pats pikas, kada daugiausiai pas mumis būna gerbių, jau atskridu šių ir šiaurės, tai yra rugsėjo vidurys. Ar žinot balsą putpelės? Putpelyt, putpelyt, putpelyt. Tos, kurios peri pastato viduje, tai tos yra šalmeninės krepždės. Ir jos va skirti, pažiūrėkite į uodegą. Matot ūsus tokius. Va, ilgi ūsai tokia, va, nutysta nuodegos. 
O langinė krežde, jinai turi ant to degį, viršų ant to degį skrėjino dega, tai viršo dego šia tas pasturgalis. Tai va, turi baltą tokią juostą, juostelę. O čiurlys, čiurlys yra negiminingas visiškai kreždėms. Didysis smargasis genys. Kaip migruoja paukščiai, jeigu taip įsivaizduojame Europos žemėlapį, ne, jie skrenda į vakarus, kol atsirėmė į Baltijos jūrą ir tada palei Baltijos jūros pakrantę varo ją apačią. Galima matyti tą kitą paukštį, kur sakiau irgi su klimato kaita Lietuva daugiau atkleido, tai usuotose zylės. Pamatyti kartai sunkiau, pirma visą laiką išgirstate, o išgirstate visą laiką va tokį balsą. Yes, then the, the, the video goes on with uh, um, the people sharing their experiences on, on how they come to understand uh, how migration patterns of birds are changing due to climate change in Lithuania and such. Um, and uh, yes, I will share, as I mentioned, uh, the full link of this. Uh, and, uh, But that is uh, mainly the, the presentation uh, for, for today. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. And uh, I would be more than, than happy to see if uh, there are any questions uh, or, or doubts. Hi, Tor. So thank you very much for your presentation. I had a little bit of an unstable connection there, so I missed your last sentence, but um, I'm looking at the chat box. There is not really a question that came in. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps um, what is, uh, perhaps you can, can share with us what is on the planning uh, regarding uh, the, the Corona. Oh, there's actually a question coming in. Um, Thor, who is your partner organization in the Czech Republic? Perhaps you can answer that question from Andre Vitek. Yes, it's an NGO called uh, Namisli. Uh, so I, I guess Andre is a Czech, so I am sorry if I am not pronouncing it uh, correctly. Namisli uh, is the name of the, our partner there. And uh, they are dealing, they are actually the ones that are dealing with the development of the board game. Uh, on climate change. They are about to finalize it. Uh, the board game will be done uh, not only in Czech, but also translated into the languages of uh, all the partners. And they are also involved in the organization and participation to street events and film festivals. Obviously this year, uh, it has been a, a little bit difficult uh, due to the cancellation of several events, uh, street events where we were supposed to do some street art and those kind of things in, in the Czech Republic. But um, if you go to our website, that it's uh, climategame.eu, I will write it in uh, the chat box. Uh, you can see there in our contacts uh, the details of the partner because they are uh, also dealing with the recruitment of uh, young ambassadors and uh, who, whomever wants to, to join and participate to the project in, in all of its forms, uh, in all of its activities, including the, the wilderness camps and such. Okay, great. Um, I have another question for you, Thor. Um, these, uh, these wilderness camps, when are we gonna do them together in Austria? <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we, we can, uh, if we find a, a way to synergize uh, our, our projects, uh, but it would be very interesting 
to, to see to invite you and your volunteers to any of the wilderness camps uh, that will be happening in Slovakia, Romania, Latvia next year, uh, Hungary, etc. Um, but we do also need to, to get our young ambassadors to experience uh, a little bit of the wilderness uh, beyond our uh, implementing countries. So it would be a really, a really good thing to, to get them there. Yeah, perfect. I think we also have uh, later this week another presentation from uh, uh, WWF uh, Generation Earth, who is also doing similar youth camps regarding wilderness and reconnecting to wilderness. Uh, so it's going to be uh, very interesting to, to see how we can do something together in, in Austria. Of course, when the Corona restrictions allow it uh, to do so. Yes, yes. Uh, it was um, a really challenging task because uh, most of our activities in the project, uh, at least the, um, the, the ones that make, made us launch uh, the project, uh, required a lot of uh, outdoor events and integration and these things. And they just happened to be hit by, by the pandemic and the wilderness camps were really affected. We didn't know if we were going to be making them or not. In Slovakia, for instance, we had to postpone them. So we will do two sets of wilderness camps in Slovakia uh, next year instead of one, just to also replace the one that we unfortunately couldn't do this year. But the idea is very simple. I mean, any person uh, in between the ages of 16 and 35 uh, can participate to the project, uh, either to the wilderness camps or even more becoming a, a young ambassador uh, of uh, the, not only the project of the, the theme of climate change and work with us. Uh, we will render uh, all the uh, tools and materials and preparation that it's needed and all the support that comes with uh, a project uh, funded by the European Commission uh, in order to really start going beyond. I mean, um, I, I also consider the project as one more branch of uh, what we are already seeing with uh, all the youth movements from Fridays for Future to Extinction Rebellion to the Sunrise Movement. Um, it is about working everyone together uh, and finding ways to really push for a mobilization of people that can be incremental all the time and with the, with the ultimate goal of like really make the change that we need to do in order to save, a, to save our wilderness, to save a, a, pretty much a, a ourselves. Uh, no matter how dramatic that, that might sound. Great. So thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, yeah, all the best of luck with the implementation of your project. And uh, we hope to hear more from you. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. And uh, thanks a lot for your invitation and for the time given.